Thank you. So, uh, hello, everybody. Um, yes, Judy, I think it's your turn to take minutes. Um, so, we've just determined, Allison, that the minutes from the May 15th meeting were yours. And um, does somebody, somebody want to make a motion to approve them? Motion to approve minutes. Second. Second. Okay. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, super. Um, is the center school the first thing on the agenda? I think it is. Sorry, I don't have that in front of me. Let, okay, so let me bring you up to date. Um, today, just by coincidence, is 90 days from the day that we submitted our draft preservation restriction document to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. Right. You may recall that we were told we would have a response between 30 and 60 days. I, um, <laughs> I wrote to Michael Steinitz on the 61st day and I had not heard back from him. So last Wednesday, I called him on his cell phone and he said, oh yes. He said, I'm sorry, we've been delayed because um, oh. of, our, of our grant programs. And I did not say, oh, do you mean the grants that you give away every year that never change in their design, the programs? But I said, oh, okay. And um, uh, what is too bad <laughs> is that since he had the comments right on the top of his head, he presumably could have produced them on the third day. Oh boy. <laughs> but, but at any rate, so the comments were these. Um, I had sent him the wrong page reference for the deed to the center school. I had been provided the wrong page reference and I stupidly didn't check it. Anyway, I immediately figured that out and sent him screenshots and every, that's all done. That's all fine. He um, said most that uh, just about everything in the basic preservation restriction uh, document is fine. Um, and I had a chance to look through it very quickly. Did anybody else have a chance? I'm sorry. I mean, I forwarded to you as soon as I got it. It, it looked mostly fine to me. I read um, the cover letter. It looked like a lot of minutia. Yes, yes. But but kind of manageable minutia, you know, turn the yep. page, fix that. Um, his big question was, his big questions were about the poor benighted milk bottle. Um, he wanted to know if there was a formal agreement between the town and historical society, which is a good question. Uh, and he said, I don't understand. There ought to be something where the historical society um, makes a commitment to maintain the uh, milk bottle properly. And I, I didn't have it open in front of me. I actually, it didn't occur to me I would reach him when I called him. And I said, I really think we put that in there. So I was able to send a note the next day to say that's exhibit G that is in there. Um, in fact, for everybody's information, the Historical Society just spent $1,400 on repairs to the internal structure. But he then said, and this has a postscript, I, I think that the easement ought to be granted by the town to the Historical Society before uh, the building is sold. That makes, sense. Um, that makes sense. Well, I also thought it made sense, but as you may have seen in the letter he sent today, he has changed his opinion on that. Um, oh boy. So, but in the meantime, I spent 45 minutes today reading select board minutes from 1994 to 1995, yes, today, which was, is always entertaining. Um, Allison's seen one of my discoveries that the town used to award a dog of the year award and the dog's photograph used to be in the town annual report. Um, it must have been selected at random though, right? There was no criteria for this award. You know, Allison, I've been running around like a crazy person today and I knew you would want to know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think it was um, in merit. I think it was or drawing out of a hat. I, 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 I think that that was probably true. But then um, just to go on before I tell you what I found out about the historic, about the milk bottle, um, that was also the year when an override failed. And Alan, were you, did, were you living in town in 1994? 
Yeah. So what I hadn't known, and maybe other people know, is that that failed override resulted in really dramatic cuts to the town budget. The cemetery commissioners were told they had no budget. And Adelia and Fred Bardwell were going to meeting after meeting, apologizing for people to people who are complaining about no maintenance in the cemeteries. Um, Keith Bardwell's highway budget was reduced. I'm sorry, I didn't write that down, but it was an incredible cut in the budget. Yeah. People were laid. People were laid off in various departments. I think that's um, when they got rid of the streetlights. It's streetlights. Yes, streetlights. Oh, no. And um, it made me wonder. Uh, this has nothing to do with the historical commission. Sort of what turned the town's fortunes, so that even though we have problems now and worries, we're not. I mean, this was really a profoundly difficult time. You could tell. Um, interesting. So interesting. Yeah. So I discovered I don't the details. Uh, okay, but pardon. You I remember don't the details. But I do yeah. remember it, but I don't remember yeah. the details. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we moved here 15 years. When did you move back, Judy? 2007. So again, 12 or 13 years after. I that. think it might have been some growth in the industrial park, Deerfield urethane. Um, it may very well have been because some there's of those a, things. Or, Yankee yeah. Kennel may have expanded. Yeah, yeah, Manalot may have disappeared at that point before the Yankee Candle took it over. There was a big cabinet factory where Yankee Candle yeah. was. Well, maybe right. that's, maybe right. that's when Yankee Candle moved in to replace Marilot. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's-, it's No, it that, was, it's, that was, yeah, because Marilot was the time of the well pollution. So that would make sense. I, right, it was interesting. So I discovered that um, there, it's very clear that the select board voted unanimously to provide the space to the historical society. Um, they were given a Henry Baldwin, you know, who worked on oh, the pottery, yeah. gave them three site options, and they chose the current site. Um, and then they actually waived a, the building permit fee for the historical society. So I um, there's one piece of correspondence. It would be nice if we found it, but. I, I've asked Sammy Lavelle to look for it. However, however now, um, it, please do read Michael Steinitz's letter because I read it to say that he has changed his opinion <laughs> and that we okay. should, um, uh, anyway, that's where we are. I, and I've, I've started talking to Brian about this, but not, not with this newest piece of information. Um, Brian told me Friday that there are three reasonably serious potential buyers in the wake. You know, buyers at a dollar, which would be great. So, um, and he then asked me if I thought Ann um, uh, Barker were still a fourth, and I said I did not think so. Allison, was that the correct thing to say? Not as far as I know. As far as I know, but you know, okay. I don't know 100%, okay. not as far as I know. Okay, okay. So his two were um, Aubert, who has the blue school, and two uh, real estate people in the area. Is this something we can put in the minutes? That there are three potential buyers? Yeah. I think I think we can say that Brian Domina told me that, sure. Okay. I, I can't name them because we, we were standing on the edge of another meeting. Oh, well, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see any reason not to. So I guess what I would like um, from you is um, your uh, endorsement of having me go through all these changes, do what I have can do. Uh, Judy, I might have to ask some of your time to help me sort out his comments about how we describe the property. I, Sure. I think um, I think you'd be the best one to do that. And then I think the next step would be to get it back to Brian, who will then run it past town council. Because again, as I read Michael Steinitz's letter for today, I do 
he does not seem to me to be saying we need to look at it again. He seems to be saying here are our comments um, and you, you ought to address them before, uh, before you move forward with um, marketing is the word that he uses. Well, I move that you okay. that Donna have us our blessing to um, refine the document to in conjunction with Steinitz's comments. I'll second that. Okay, thanks. Is that all right with everybody? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yep. Okay, yep. Um, that's great. Uh, so. Um, so the North Street area, which is more interesting. I think we should start with Judy's map. <laughs> is that a reasonable place to start? Sure. Or Judy, do you want to talk about that? You, you made some notes in the email you sent, which I need well, to call up again. I figured. I can't do the data sheet till I know what the properties are, and it seemed like a good time to be yeah. thinking about that. Um, and as I said in the email, it seems to me the east side of North Street is fairly, you know, relatively easy, or at least conceptually, um, I would have it close to the property lines for the houses, first few houses at the top of the hill by Swamp Road and then open it up down to the Mill River, basically all the way up to Deerfield, except then at, once, you, once the Mill River crosses the street, then there's still a campground on the other side that I think we should encompass. And, and also Baroness's land up to the property, up to the town line, if that makes any sense. So your your yellow line does not include the campground or the Baronis property, does it? I it tried to. I maybe didn't okay. draw it far enough out. Well, I, I I'm just are the dotted lines the town lines? Yeah. The that was the intent. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I didn't, I didn't. The problem is when you're working with a map that size, you can't see the buildings on the on the map. And I didn't spend the world's greatest amount of time, but the intent was to include the campground and and the Baroness property, um, where where I get where it's harder for me, or where I think we need to discuss as a group more, is um, the west side of the road and how far up. Glen Road, it should go. Right. And, right. and then moving back south from there, you know, I think if, if the focus is on dairy farms, you want to get all of the, the buildings that belong to the Scott Dairy Farm, which would include the house at the top of the hill and, and now the horse barn up there. Um, so and then, I, sorry, go ahead. And then I would just basically extend that line straight up to Quanquan, but. Anyway, it was it's just a starting point. For no, it's great. I think it's great. Um, I have a few questions. Do other people have questions, though, before I start in? I, I just had a comment. Part of what. I'm sure Judy is trying to compute that makes it complicated is the property history because some of those farms you mentioned had land that extend like Quanquan had land that extended across the street at one time. That wasn't Quanquan, it was Dickinson. Yeah. And and then if you and so each and I think it's probably true for Baronis and it's true for the Scots and it's true for the the Sanderson had land, you know, down lower. So, well, I don't know that we need. <clears throat> I thought about it for, you know, I'm I'm especially familiar with Scots because obviously their land continues um, <clears throat> the other side of the river. But I think you can tell the story without without 
without all the acreage. I mean, as long as you get enough to be representative. Yeah, and I guess the, that's right. And, and the Sanderson property, the former properties were all down, was it Swamp Road or Christian Lane? I know this, but I've forgotten. I mean, the, the Well, yeah, I'm not clear on the, the, what the Dickinson's and Sanderson's, but I know that their properties uh, continue downhill across the, across the street. But the other Sanderson's, the Glenn Sanderson's also had family ownership of, uh, you know, down on North Street at the Giles Dickinson house at one time was there. Yeah, but that, that would be covered. Okay. Um, what I was trying to do was avoid massive swaths of property, you, you know, in most, most area maps, you would just draw the map to the property line, but when you've got 40 acre parcels or 20 acre parcels, it, it, it gets pretty ridiculous and, and you get a funny shaped map. So uh, um, Allison knows that I had an interesting conversation with Liz Scott on Saturday, who I had not met before. And um, I don't remember how this happened, but I was, you know, uh, I was telling her about our Roaring Brook exhibit and encouraging her to go. And she said, oh, yes, you know, I know the Glen very well. And she then said, I believe, and I may have heard this not perfectly, but I believe she said, that she moved to Waitley from Brattleboro in 1975 to marry David Scott. So she'd known, known the property that long. And that they used to pasture their heifers in the Glen. But the property she was talking about was owned by the Baronis family. So I interpreted that as being the property, you know, the Glen is divided into two two parcels. There's the very big undeveloped parcel. And then there's it's between, I think it's about four acres that has the house, the Sanderson. No, 35. Oh, 35. There's 35 acres. Yeah, you're you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. talking about up, up the hill behind Satyrian. That must be right. what she means. I wouldn't call that the Glen. Right. Because the Glen is the valley, but right. where you would not yeah. put a cow. They they still Baronas is still hay that I think. Um, I don't know. It's one big multi-flora rose patch. It's oh, all okay. and 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 this so you like this, Allison. I that I said to her that we'd had a little trouble imagining. Sorry, this is slightly off our topic, but you know, or at least I had clambering around up there. You know, where was this picnic ground? Where was because it doesn't feel flat. And then I, I told her that I was suddenly realized I was standing in the middle of a huge installation of multiflora rose and that it was flat. And she said, that's <laughs> it. That's where we used to have our heifers. <laughs> you know? right. So right. um so I don't know. Is that are we then since uh, are we then still within the Waitley line if the area we're talking about right now do you think well that's a good yeah, question because it goes right through that field that's a really good question Donna. does it matter i mean does it does our area need need be need a Waitley area be limited to Waitley? Uh, that's a good question well if it if the line goes through, we can include what's in Waitley and, and reference the rest of the text. Does the West Waitley area include any of Conway? You know, there were mills up Avery Brook that are now in Conway. Uh, well, I mean, what area, not the North Street area. That we're talking about. No, no, I was just wondering if other areas in town extended beyond town lines. You know, you could say that Canterbury <laughs> extends into South Deerfield. No, I don't think they do. I don't, I don't think, think it does. 
I don't think it does. Okay. Just, I mean, and the and the reason so I'm shaking follow, my we head. We should follow that form. Yeah, we should follow that format then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting um, it's an interesting approach because uh, they're obviously all over the state. There'd be there'd be regions that cross current town lines. <laughs> you know. Um, Right. Uh, Judy, why did you say that you wanted to exclude the Wadham property? And you, well, didn't, I, and you didn't exclude it with, on, with your yellow border, right? No, I didn't mean to exclude the property. I meant to exclude the house at the top of the hill. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. I didn't read it properly. Okay. You mean the um, house they, they built in the last 10 years? Yeah. 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 I, I just didn't think it needed to go that far. Um, west but it would i th i think most of the farming occurred to the east of that but that's the kind of thing that you probably allison knows more about than i do well you you may remember that there used to be up where that house quote unquote ha the house is um there was a tobacco ish barn up there at one time when yeah, owned that's, it, isn't that where the, the quote guest house is and the other house is in back further? I don't, there's only one residence that I know of there. I, I can't say I've been on it, but it's the one you can, it's the big thing that looks like a barn that you can see from the street. Yeah. I, I thought they were building another one. They haven't built, they it. haven't built back beyond it as far as I know. Okay, well, you, your drones would be. Then that, that. then that house would probably be included. And I do I, have a photograph of that barn, by the way, somewhere. You know, on that 1950 aerial map that we found, Donna? Yeah. That would show us, that would show that barn for sure and might. Right, and you could probably find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which I won't be able to do since. I've discovered that yeah, my home so. my home indexing is woeful. <laughs> that that barn had um, horizontal slats like the cemetery barn. That's really too bad that oh. it's gone. Oh. So I think this sounds good. I, I do. I I didn't go back and look at other area um, maps, but. Am I right that they are drawn, that it doesn't require actually documenting, you know, the longitude and the latitude and the corners and whatnot? I mean, they're conceptual or does well, it? Well, the, the other area maps were all done with little X marks on a, you know, pen and ink drawing. And right. it was before they wanted the property, the assessor's maps. So you, d you didn't get into boundaries and there are no boundaries and we sort of had to conjecture. I, I'm not quite sure how they did them. It would be interesting to look how they did them on, on the mass maps, but, and we should check that. But um, and normally most of those focus on the buildings rather than the, the farm activity. Right. Right. Um, and, and would that, would it be Peter Stott who we would ask about that? I would just do it. You think? Okay. I think Peter Stott is quite accepting if you present him something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe because it's not, you know, these aren't binding legally on anything. And, no. They're, they're, they're and, and he has a, latitude to, has a latitude to do that, that a preservation restriction wouldn't. But. Right. So is, uh, are, sounds like we all agree with Judy's proposal. Yes? I think so. Yeah. Yes. It makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, so Susan, do you want to, Tell us what you've what you've learned from mailing out the materials we had. 
yeah, so we I sent the backwards form and, and or Derek is writing to 12 homeowners up and down the property. I think it was the 11 that had macros plus Lynn, who we know does not have a macro entry. I heard back from four plus my own um, with changes. Some were to Derek's history, some were to macros information. Um, except for my own, which I realized I didn't share. I've shared them with everybody. To me, it, it just doesn't seem like a good use of time to read well. Yeah, Anne said to change this and that. How do we want to proceed with these? Like, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel like I'm knowledgeable enough to make changes based on a homeowner's information, particularly when I'm getting conflicting information. Well, yeah. I I um I was thinking after you forwarded uh, the response from um, Mary or Chris Abel, I don't yeah. I don't remember which one. I thought, well, I, I my memory is that some of that response had to do with people who had lived in the house. Well, Derek's history is about ownership. It's not about tenants, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, and, and we're not. I don't think we're going to even attempt to get into who happened to have lived in the house on yeah. date X or date Y. I, I think if you like, if the ones that seem to be really um, uh, helpful um, in making corrections to Derek's drafts, you should just pass on to Derek. Okay. I mean, keep them and send them. I mean, she's, they haven't been posted yet because, you know, they're in draft. Yeah. Um, I think you should. Uh, the The one that you sent that seemed to me to need a conversation was Lynn saying that Derrica's write-up was about a completely different house than the one she had lived in. And I have decided I'm not going to become anything, anybody's expert in the Scott family house history. <laughs> I mean, we're not in a position to mediate who's right, what's the right information. Well, I don't think I'd be, I mean, Derica may say, you know, I know my information is correct because she's gone to, you know, source deeds and, and wills and whatnot, but um, probate statements. But I don't, I can't imagine she's going to mind hearing that there, there may be new information. Someday we should we should update a lot of these forms. Um, was it like Mary Abel's house was a broom broom factory, you know, and and um, Baroness's had the campground along with yeah. along with their dairy and they went on to own all of the to be involved with the ice cream stand in green the ice cream factory in greenfield and they had that franchise for the cop the cream milk bottle and all of that so there's a lot we could put in those someday when we get done um, you know i i i mean i think the macros forms are generally a mess. Uh, I, they have useful information, but it, even beyond content, they're ungrammatical, they're very poorly copy edited, there are lots of bad transcriptions. Um, and I wonder whether at some point I mean, unless any of us is willing to take it on, and honestly, I mean, I got stuck seven or eight years ago, three quarters of the way through trying to improve the write-up for my own house. Um, Judy, you've been motoring through projects, but is this something we should ask for a grant to hire someone to do at some point? And then the question would be, what should we hire them to do? Because there are also now, there are also a number of historic structures in town that were never put into macros. You know, what's, what's the priority, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I mean, one thing I was hoping with this project, and I really think it started 
is that it gets people looking at the changes in their houses since since this was done, which is part of the battle. Um, and that was a question that I had. What happens if something's changed from what's in the form? I mean, my own form, I found two things that we, well, one we changed, one was changed before we bought the house. Well, that's what, what I think you do is write a new form with new pictures and they will attach the old form to it, reference the old form as a source of information. And they, they file them back to back. Susan, I, I tried to revise ours. It, it really is embarrassing how many years ago it was and sent it to Peter Stott, who actually has very quick turnaround, um, in, in my opinion. Um, and he sent back some helpful comments he, he actually took my Word document and formatted it in macros format, whatever I mean by that. He pointed out that there were two people with names like, you know, Capacity Brown, but they weren't Capacity Brown and they were inter, they were confused. And then he left it in my hands and I haven't done anything else. So I guess I'm, I'm, I'm saying all of this because I think he, he seems to be quite willing to work with a homeowner to improve, um, and he accepted everything I had done about, you know, it was renovated in 1962 by not Bill Gass, but whichever Gass worked on my house, and you know, that kind of thing. He, he accepted the more recent changes as helpful. Well, I'm happy to help you, Susan. I, I've done enough of these now. Um, if you can write the history or the things that have changed or physical descriptions. I can send you the, do you have the template? It's, I can, I can get you the template and. I appreciate that. But anyway, the bigger question is what do we want to do with, with all of them? Well, do we, in, do, do we, do we need perfect <laughs> macro centers for each building or structure in order to no. submit an area no. form? Okay. No, I think we should go ahead with the area form and, and to the extent that we can work bit by bit on some of the other um, form Bs, the building forms do that. I mean, I can, I think I could do the wheel locks without too much difficulty. And I've got a, I got a nice old photo that shows both our houses that I could include for that. Um, but no, let's let's work on the area foreman. Um, yeah, Derica is a, about to go off on her second camping trip for the summer. But would it be helpful when she comes back for me to ask her to look for every for photographs of the um, of North Street buildings in the Historical Society collection? I would think. I mean, so. I mean, we have. I now. think she could skip. She could skip Quan Quan. She could skip our house, and um, I think. I mean, you produced that wonderful photograph that was taken from behind Beverly Sanderson's house. You know. Um, Is it mostly a matter of picking things to use or do you want everything? We don't need historical photographs for the area form very much, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, we don't. I mean, well, well, I don't I don't really know. I shouldn't say that. Um I mean I've looked at some some of the area Waitley area forms. Would it be what if um, I can do, I'm happy to do this. What if we asked Peter for examples of, of good area forms that have been done in farming areas? And just see, see. Sure. Because I, I, there's not really, I think, a way to search macros 
other than by location. You know, you can't you can't do yeah. a, you can't do a subject search. <laughs> you could ask, you know, you could ask Derek if she can come up with anything for North Street historical photos of farming, right? As opposed to just houses, that might be very helpful. Right, right. I mean, when when I asked her when uh, when I sorry, I don't actually even remember if. I don't think I got these from Derricka, but when I was putting Hillside Dairy and Fairview Dairy on the hidden history pages, the photographs I got were from the families. And they yeah. were they weren't, you know, they weren't vistas. They were photographs of Neil Sanderson and two little kids, you know, and milk bottles. <laughs> Um, yeah. Alice, Allison, what should we do with Quan Quan? Because Quan Quan is its own area form now. Well, that's uh, that's up to you guys. I, I don't I don't know what the right thing to do is. Um, I, think I think we just reference that area form, and and Hillside is an area form too. Okay, not a very good one, but it is. I think maybe if we just rather than I would start by trying to get some sense of the history and then writing a narrative and and getting the property data set down and then see what what we what would fill it out um Okay, so Judy, are you going to do that or are we just well, somebody I else? Well, I volunteer to do the data set and the architectural descriptions. Okay, great. I think that's great. Um, should I ask Peter Stott or not for examples? Sure. Okay, okay. I think this is good. Um, Anything else about North Street? Uh, I want to go back then to the center school that mentioning Peter Stott uh, reminded me of something. Um, uh, Judy had sent her much improved, revised and much improved um, macros and, uh, description of the center school to Peter, who responded with the original copies of the original plans. Yes. And it occurred to me that I should probably send those to Michael Steinitz, who might be interested in what his colleague has produced. Um, but when when will how how close is your revised submission to completion? You were you were copying me for a while, but it this was you know in May. Well, well, that, you, didn't I send it in? I don't know. <laughs> Would you mind checking? Because <laughs> I should, yeah, I should it. have that for the for the draft preservation restriction. Yeah. I mean, I had a placeholder in it. Yeah, I think I'll check. Okay, thanks, thanks. Um, okay, so um, other business. Alan has other business, which is about which is. Uh, under under the heading of um, our discussions about uh, helping people to locate likely the historic, the historic like, or historic sites, right? I, yeah, just uh, I can be brief, and I can send a copy of the the summary that I've made. Uh, I'm supposed to have Allison with me on the call with Scott Jackson, but through a variety of stupid reasons, it didn't quite happen. But um, my apologies, Allison. I thought I didn't have your phone number, but I in fact did. Um, I could have fine. called you. Fine. Um, anyway, um, I had a relatively brief meeting with with Scott, and just a, a little bit of background. What I've been trying to do is um, find out some of the online resources that are available, and what uh, Massachusetts has, in fact, is something called Mass Mapper, which is a GIS system that covers the entire state, and it's one of the things that Scott uses. Um, he pulls information from it. His his feeling about stuff is he, he is a consumer of information rather than a creator of it. So he is not one to actually help us do very much except to pass on information to other folks. Um, 
But the mass mapper system has everything that we are likely to want to look at. In fact, it has all of the macros information embedded in it as a map all on its own. It's a layer of map. It has all the LIDAR systems, all the LIDAR stuff. Uh, it has soil types. It has basically all of the things that we want to use as markers for prehistoric sensitivity for the most part. They, they are the things that are used by, um, by the actual archeologists out there in the field. So we can use this stuff one layer at a time. It's not easy to um, do things simultaneously. It's a, the, the math mapper system is sort of like macros in some ways. It's, it, you can filter stuff down to the ind individual town and sometimes to the, um, um, the actual item that you're looking at. So there are uh, entries for all of the points that exist I can show you some of this if you want to do that, but it may be better if you have a look at it yourself. Um, um, and and um, yeah. Alan, I believe we did, we used Mass Mapper when we were working with Zachary, whatever his name is, the yes. undergraduate. I mean, right. well, we have that's looked that's at this mapping system. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly, because I, I brought it up with the drop down menus and, and you can check a couple different things and if you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have used these before. All that information is, well, is available. Um, what's, what Ellen uh, is saying is that is that the information is available on Mass Mapper, but the, the next step we need to take is to create, it's the creation of our own map that we need to figure out how to do. Yeah, and that's not as easy to do as I'd hope with Mass Mapper or with any other system. As a matter of fact, the scales change depending on uh, what it is that you want to look at. So the lidar scales are different than the topographic scales are different from the macro scales. Um, so it's it's hard to print things, but you can look at each individual item by itself. So if you have a place you want to look at, that's not too hard to do, and you can pick out what the topography of the area is, what the slopes are, what the distance to water is, um, the, um, the soil types that, uh, that exist in that area. There are um, items that will show up uh, from the map that you can look at. We don't really have a good way of looking at the whole thing, you know, two or three maps all together. And that is one of the no. things that might be available through um, by way of Scott, he's willing to pass stuff on to the people who do GIS system design, much like, um, what was his name, Zachary? What was his name? Yeah. It's Zachary. It's Zachary. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember. His he was in that, in that program. And if yeah, we he provide was... some sort of project description of what we want to do, uh, somebody in that class that creates these systems may be willing to take it on as a project to work on. And we would we would get that and have the use of it at the end of it, more or less free. Um, the, the problem with actually doing it ourselves is you have to buy the software and learn how to use it and all the rest of it. And that's not too easy to do. There's a- Well, the other suggestion, you know, Alan, that, that yeah. I think we could consider is that yeah. if we can generate the various layers or kinds of maps, I think I can combine them in, uh, page layout software okay. and actually st stack them and create a map that's good enough for what we're talking about. You know, I think we're talking about general areas and we can always err on the side of including a little too much. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that in a way. No, there isn't. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a little too little. But if we... I, and I don't think that would be all that complicated, honestly. And if we want to consider that, I, I would I would volunteer to try to make that map using the software that I have that can combine can combine that those that imagery. Yeah, it might, it might be a good idea for us to meet again then and and go over what I found and, and look at what you have because that sounds like a good possibility. Well, I don't ha I don't have anything. We we would have to. Oh. We would have to create, we generate the maps or just yeah. screenshots from, from mass map or of the soil type map and the blah, blah map and the other map and the other map, and then figure out how to 
superimpose them essentially on each other and create zones that are the sensitivity zones that we're talking about. Yeah. I'm, I am very, I have to say, I must have been looking out the window. I'm very impressed with what you're trying to do, you two, because I was happy with the draft of the words, <laughs> you know, the indicators, possible indicators for the prehistoric versus historic sites. Yeah. And and I knew you were going off to refine them a little bit more. I, I did not understand you were actually hoping to visualize that. In the form of a map, I, oh, yeah. I think it's. Well, I think it not? sounds we have, really interesting. I think we have the capacity to do it, so I think it's worth a try. Um, um uh, our our favorite. It's one not of our like favorite... we're creating a legal document. I mean, this is a no, thing no. Just reference, you know, yeah. and right. And probably... I, and I think I think it's Allison's like right that it's better. Or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's better is if if it's if we're giving people a general idea and not getting into not attempting to get into something that might actually require you know dealing with individual property owners. Yeah. <laughs> um, we we can do that. We can look at an individual property if we get some um, some plan or outline from people. We know right. what it is, and we can get some pretty good idea of what the sensitivity of the area is. So we have some valid, some basis for judgment. Uh, but it would be good to do the to try and do the whole town. Um, that might be might well be worth the effort, and uh, pay us off in the long run. Okay. So why don't I send around the document that I've got um, after this meeting, and we can have a look at it and add to it and do whatever we want with it. And go from and, there. Okay, and then you and Allison will get to get together yeah, on I the phone so. or somehow. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Um, is there other other business? Okay. Well, thank you. That was interesting. <laughs> um, so our new administrative assistant Jessica Murphy has sent me a confirming email with every date for the next month, we should, for the next year rather, wow. or she said, so I will forward it to all of you. Yeah. Um, but the um, the next meeting would be, rather than finding her email, I'm just looking at a map, I mean, in a calendar, would be the 21st of August. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. The well, light outside. You guys looking out the window at the light? The whole world is turned sort of orange all of a sudden. Well, do you know that we are we are again in an air quality warning? Yeah. But all of a sudden, you can the, the sun is doing something where it's really a strange right. color, like an eclipse. Hmm. Huh. Look we have, we have, the heat we out. have, we have friends staying with us who are from Maine and the north of England, respectively, and I think they think between the flooding and the air quality, they've come to the moon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have a couple of friends trying to walk the Appalachian Trail up in New Hampshire now, and they're they're getting very very wet. So. Oh yeah, not having fun. Yeah. Um, they give up for a couple of weeks. Gosh, I has anybody driven down Christian Lane in the last few days? There yeah. is a yeah. lake, the lake in front of the famous Nexamp solar installation with oh, the yeah. with yeah. the trees uh, just above Fred Orlowski's house. It is really. Hmm. It's real. And that's Mr. Just, Mr. Coca, that's who owns that's that really land, model. has been trying to get the town to drain it and the town says i'm sorry it's your problem not ours and yeah, right. evidently well, there are i talked to brian about it today he said there are quote farm drains that are, have been there forever that go under the road but but there's no formal agreement and that he's going to have to um unclog them himself he the owner yeah, yeah. I know Scott said to do that with theirs once, but they right. they were fortunate enough to own the property on both sides of the street. Right. So, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I well, started. So I asked. I told um, Brian that I've been thinking about whether 
CPA money might be available to help improve drainage on farmland because I think I think it's going to be a real problem. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really really bad. Um, okay, well then, thank you all. Good night. Good night. <laughs> we all have work. We all have work to do. Okay. Bye bye. Good night. Bye.